Hello, welcome to the stream. How's it going, everybody? How we doing tonight? How's it shaking? Tonight, I'm excited. I'm excited for tonight. We're doing a. We're doing more versus Capcom streams, so. So if you missed last week, I uh, I. Okay, I figured out where to start this story. If you were here last week, then you know that I got excited when Capcom put out a survey uh, asking people what games they'd like to see uh, revived, what game franchises they want to see like revisited or remade or continued, versus Capcom was on that survey. Um, and, uh, me, I'm a, I'm a big prediction guy. I love predicting things. I love predicting, you know, games that'll come out. I love predicting release schedules. I love predicting rosters for fighting games. And so last week, I prepared four different rosters, um, for hypothetical versus Capcom games. Um, you know, Netflix versus Capcom, DreamWorks versus Capcom, uh, Shonen Jump versus Capcom. And last week I built two of those rosters on stream. I, uh, I did Netflix versus Capcom and I did Shonen Jump versus Capcom. And, uh, and I've got VODs for those both on YouTube and on Twitch. Um, and you know, yeah, if you poke around on, on the Twitch, if you're on the Twitch page right now, you can poke around and find links to both. Um, and, uh, and over the past week I made, I made a fifth roster. So we're, uh, so we have three options tonight and I'm going to spin a wheel to determine which ones we do. It's nice that versus Capcom is even in consideration. Is it's nice that versus Capcom is even in consideration after infinite. Yes, it really is. My theory is that they... Is that after Infinite, they were like, we might not do a versus Capcom ever again. And then Street Fighter VI sold so well that they're like, wait, maybe if we like, maybe if we put like a respectable budget into our fighting games and like give them a lot of love and care, people will buy them. And maybe that includes versus Capcom. So I think this is them starting to kind of feel that out. And, uh, and yeah, yeah, like, th this is the first peep we've heard from Capcom that they still, that they're still kind of looking at that franchise after, uh, after Infinite kind of seemed to kill it, you know? So, like, it, it is, I'm very excited, so excited that I've been making a bunch of fake rosters. What if we made the game good, right? <laughs> yeah, what what if the game was actually decent? Would people buy it if the game was actually decent? <laughs> Maybe fighting games can make money if we make them in a way that is good and fun. Yeah, I, I know. Uh crazy. Crazy thoughts over over at Capcom headquarters. Over at Capcom HQ. But uh But hey, man. I'll take it. So, uh, let's pull up the wheel and see what the first roster is I'm building tonight. There we go. Um, where, where are you in a way that's like, yeah, there you can, you can, you can go down there. You can go down there. By the, by the way, let me let me know if this is annoying. Like, as uh, as you might know, I'm trying to get to 100 Twitch followers, and if I get to 100 Twitch followers by the end of March, I'll keep streaming through uh, the end of 2024. Um, and you know that's that's coming up. That's getting kind of close. So I I want to you know I want to kind of incentivize it, um, and remind people and myself that that we're close. But I also, I'm so bad at, like, at, like, promoting myself, you know? I, I can never, I, I hate doing stuff like this. This, this is annoying to me, so let me know if it's annoying to you. Um, 
the good news is that when it hits 100, it'll go away. And, and then I'll stream for the rest of the year. You can already sense that DreamWorks versus Capcom will be incredibly cursed. You're assuming that that they won't all be incredibly cursed. Okay. Um, oh, let me, uh, let me open up settings real quick and make sure the spins aren't super short. We will do... We will do a 60 second spin. We'll do a one minute spin. All right, we're ready. Let's let's go. Let's spin it. DreamWorks. So we on the on the palette. DreamWorks versus Capcom. DreamWorks versus Capcom. Square Enix versus Capcom. Sega versus Capcom. We'll build one of these three. Let's go. Oh, also turn desktop audio on so you can hear the ticker going. These, I, these, putting these rosters together had different levels of struggle, and it'll be fun to kind of talk out my process. Ooh. Ooh, are, we, <laughs> are we starting with Square Enix versus Capcom, or is it going to go into Sega? Oh, ooh. Okay, I feel like we're... Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's... It's... It's, it's Square Enix. Okay. Square Enix versus... Oh my god. Of course we're starting with Square Enix versus Capcom. Of course. So last week I mentioned that um putting together the roster for Shonen Jump versus Capcom put me through hell because uh there's so much Shonen Jump history I wanted to acknowledge as much of it as possible um I guess let me start right uh let me start this stream with kind of what my restrictions are, right? Each each roster that I put together is going to be a 30 character launch roster, right? 15 characters on each side. Um and then after that, each game will have two seasons of six character DLC. So three three characters per side per season, right? Um so by the, by the end of the game's lifespan, it's a 42 character roster. I didn't want to get too big and crazy because I figured that Capcom's next versus Capcom game will not be too big and crazy, right? Because I'll have to kind of make it from scratch. Um and uh so I think I think a 30 character launch roster might be I feel like they won't want to do less than 30 because it's a versus Capcom game. Uh but I feel like yeah, I feel like we'll get exactly 30. Um, Marvel's Capcom Infinite launched with 30 characters, so that's kind of the baseline, right? Um, you once made a versus Capcom roster of Sega and Namco once when you were bored, and it's interesting to find all the obscure slash interesting characters they had in their library. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, I, I guess if I, if I get to Sega, I'll kind of talk about that more. But yeah, so, so basically, um, so basically, yeah. 30 character roster, 50 on each side. Square Enix has released more mainline Final Fantasy games than I have spots on the Square Enix side of the launch roster. Okay. So I just want you to keep that in mind, right? Se Sega has more franchises sorry square enix has more franchises than i have square enix slots on this roster so keep that in mind when when i reveal the roster for this game and it tries to cover like you know a broad scope of of square enix and them as a franchise um cuz god like yeah, Shonen Jump like like put me through hell and then Square Enix vs. Capcom like broke me. I was like I I 
I fell through the depths trying to come up with a roster for Square Enix versus Capcom I was satisfied with. This was like, this was my breaking point with this exercise, right? And I knew I couldn't like, I knew I couldn't like loosen the expectation, loosen my limitations, right? If I made the roster bigger for this, I have to make the roster bigger for all of them. Um, that was my logic, at least. So, <laughs> uh, so with that in mind, um, let's start with, uh, what the guidelines are, uh, for this game because each each game also will have its own set of guidelines, right? It'll have its own like set of uh like each each versus Capcom game is obviously like a different beast. So this is the kind of beast that I imagine Score Enix versus Capcom as. The format is 3v3, right? I feel like uh I feel like Square Enix likes their games a bit more complicated, right? A bit more uh, I, I feel like they'll be a bit more deep and mechanical. So Square Enix versus Capcom would be a three versus three. Um, Netflix versus Capcom was a two versus two. Shonen Jump versus Capcom was a three versus three, right? Square Enix versus Capcom is another three versus three. The key mechanic, each each game I feel has a different key mechanic. Um, Square Enix versus Capcom, one of the key mechanics at least is summons, where like uh, uh, before each match, you'll get to pick from a list of summons, and that's a powerful assist that doesn't cost any meter, and the assist is about as powerful as, like, a level 1 or level 2 super, basically. Um, and uh, and you can use that once per round, basically, right? Um, and that allows, like, that allows, like, a lot of different, like, Capcom and Square Enix, like, monsters and beasts to, like, cameo as summons, right? Like you can you can have Bahamut and Shiva and Ifrit uh as summons on the Square Enix side and you can have like uh Rathalos and uh and a fucking like I don't know like like mutated Wesker or something <laughs> as summons on the Capcom side. Um There's some talk in chat about uh, what franchises Square Enix does and doesn't own these days, and um, I, I did some research, and I'll I'm sure I'll get into that uh, as we as we proceed. Um, yeah, because because they they have lost like a chunk of franchises recently, right? Like I I can't I can't put Tomb Raider on the Square Enix side. Honestly, that might be a blessing in disguise because then I'd have even more space. I wouldn't know what to like. Even more characters I wouldn't have a space for. This was hard enough already. Um, oh, all right, and character guidelines, right? Character guidelines for kind of both sides. What kind of characters I'm I'm putting into this roster, right? Characters with anime vibes, um, obviously. Uh, characters with weapons and characters that use magic. Um, you know, Square Enix obviously has a lot of like a lot of RPG characters, a lot of characters that wield special weapons or have magic powers, so I wanted to kind of also do that for the Capcom side. And of course, characters from RPGs and characters from games with like level up mechanics or RPG-like mechanics. Um, I thought it was really, like, that's obviously what, that's obviously like 80% of Square Enix's whole deal, and uh, and I thought it would make for a very different Capcom roster if I kind of focused on that part of their library. To see what I could end up with, so uh, so with that in mind, let's shrink this down here. You can't wait to see Creative Business Unit Two as a character. Well, hey man, stop spoiling my roster. <laughs> okay. All right, so let's see. Where do we start? Well, let's. I guess let's get. Let's get some obvious stuff out of the way, right? Um, uh, 
and you know, I guess now that more people are here, I will repeat myself. There are, are more Final Fantasy games than the amount of Square Enix slots in the launch roster. I had to make some very hard decisions when I was making this. Please, be gentle with me. But we'll start with one that was very easy. It's Cloud. Right? Cloud's easy. Cloud, Cloud's obviously going to be on here. And, uh, you know... Um, And the thing is, is that, like, there's a couple franchises where I have multiple reps. Uh, I'd say that Final Fantasy VII is the one game on the Square Enix side where I have multiple reps, right? The one single game. There's obviously going to be multiple Final Fantasy reps, but I allowed for multiple Final Fantasy VII remake reps because, obviously, that's... That is Square Enix's headliner right now. They would have multiple Final Fantasy VII characters. But even then, I didn't have as... I can't... I could not include as many FF7 characters as I wanted. It's so, alright. Cloud. Easy. Um... Oh, good, I already got this pulled up. Great. Um, and I guess while I'm talking about FF7... Tifa. Easy. Easy pick. Obviously. Obviously she's here. Um... Yeah, she'd be great, kind of like, you know, rush down, like, yeah, just close up in your face, like Rekka's, right? Like, she's kind of built for Rekka's. Um, like, just like moves that chain into moves that chain into other moves. She's, uh, she's, she's got, she's like a combo machine, and she'll be a combo machine in the way where I could actually do her combos. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. Um So, I have I have a uh, summons down as the key mechanic, but I think another thing about Square Enix versus Capcom is there a, the the story mode of this would definitely be kind of an action RPG, right? Like the the characters you play with in story mode would would like level up and like gain new abilities and stuff. They would really RPG like the hell out of like several modes in this game. Um, and I think maybe even I even had the thought that like versus mode in this would have like a class system where each character you could choose like a class that they would specialize in that would, that would essentially mechanically be like variations in mortal Kombat, Right. Um, that was, that was the thought that I had. Um, I didn't put that down as the key mechanic, though, because that felt maybe overcomplicated, even for Square Enix and Capcom working together. Um, so maybe, maybe Capcom talked Square Enix out of doing that when, when they collaborated on this game. Um, that's all... The FF7 characters for now. So, um, I guess we'll I guess we'll put the Capcom staples up here, right? Might as well. Um, where you at? Where you at, man? There you are. Ryu, of course. I, I don't know. What, what do you want me to say about Ryu at this point? He's going to be in all of them. Oh, and but he's not going to be... He's not going to be opposite Cloud because st the Street Fighter franchise isn't really the main franchise this time around. 
is Street Fighter is usually Capcom's main franchise for these, but not really this time. Um, Chun Li. She's also in all of them. She's also going to be in all of these. It's it's what Capcom does. You know, we'll, we'll put we'll put them up here. Actually, we'll put them up here. It feels weird. Street Fighter characters won't always be up top, but they're up top. They'll be up top this time. Let's put them up top. There's like a reason it makes sense to put the Street Fighter characters on tops, and I'll explain later. Um... And the last Capcom staple, Morgan. Morgan's here again. She'll do Morgan shit. Just getting that out of the way. Um, let's see, we got Final Fantasy. Um... That's 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 the FF seven for now. There's other Final Fantasy. Let's let's move let's move to a different a different key franchise for Square Enix. Uh, the, the Dragon Quest hero. This is specifically the hero from Dragon Quest 1. Now, uh, the Dragon Quest hero has, like, a more... Even Dragon Quest 1's hero has, like, a more, like, adult design than this, right? There, there have been, uh, there have been games where, you know, he's much more, uh, like, adult-looking and proportional, um... In Square Enix versus Capcom, the Dragon Quest hero would be the would be this chibi design, right? Would be this old school ass like baby design for the hero, and he will be a silent protagonist, right? Like throughout the story mode, like uh, like basically like he's just this cute little guy that's like running around with the sword and like emoting with his face. And, like, kind of, like, you know, like, running around, little beads of sweat, like, jumping up from him. He's he's basically, he's adorable in this. In, in Square Enix vs. Capcom, uh, we have, like, an adorable version of the Dragon Quest hero that's basically just meant to kind of, like, uh, appeal to, like, old, like, to kind of nostalgia and, like, old school sensibilities, right? He's supposed to, like, evoke this feeling of an RPG from the 80s. Uh, and, and that's, that's the, uh... That's where we'll start with, like, the Dragon Quest representation. Surprised I didn't go with three or five heroes, as those are the fan favorites. Yeah, I thought about it. Um, yeah, five is my favorite. Five, five is my favorite Dragon Quest. Um, and uh, I didn't think about it. The, the problem is, is that, like half of the Dragon Quest heroes are the fan favorites, right? Three three or five are, are good picks, but people also love Eleven's hero. People also love Eight's hero, right? Um uh so uh so I, I went with just like it's like what if the hero representative was just the hero from the original? What if he was just the one from the very beginning? Like and that's and that can be a fun way to spin like, yet another RPG character with a sword that will be in this game, right? Because, like, I ran into that, I ran into that problem when I was putting together this roster. 
You like three because he looks like Gohan? Yeah, most most Dragon Quest characters inevitably end up looking like another character that Akira Toriyama designed. Um... Damn, should I just bust out the rest of Dragon Quest? Because the problem is, there's not a lot. Let's do it, so you guys can kind of start to see my problem. Alright, next Dragon Quest rep. Jade from Dragon Quest Eleven. Um... Uh, yeah, Jade's really cool. She's she's one of my favorite characters in Eleven to start, but I think she's also just a fan favorite in general. Um, she's got a great fighting style, you know, like she does. She does kind of like melee martial arts stuff, but she also has like like this naginata, you know, like this spear with a. Uh, well, I guess a lot of spears have like a spear with like a blade at the end, basically, um, and. Uh, and yeah, no, she's she's cool. She's a badass. She kind of had, she kind of had to be in this game, right? Like I, I think she's she would make a great fighting game character, um, and she just like I think she resonates with a lot of people too. Uh, she has a lot of like kind of obvious like super move like potential. Yeah, no, she's really cool. So here she is. hoping for Sylvando DLC. Oh man. I I I struggled with this roster so much that that didn't even occur to me, I'll be honest. Uh sorry to break the bad news so early. That would have been amazing. Um but here's the last Dragon Quest representative in the base roster. Uh, Torneco from Dragon Quest IV. Um, you know, this is kind of a very iconic Dragon Quest character. He's had his own spin-off games uh, that have played, that have basically been like mystery dungeon games where he, uh, where he kind of uh, also runs a shop, I think, because Torneco in Dragon Quest IV is a merchant, right? That ends up joining the main party and, like, helping save the world by accidentally getting wrapped up in all this prophecy stuff. Um, so he's he's kind of like this everyman character. And yeah, he's just kind of a, you know, he's just kind of a dude. He's just kind of a dude, and I think he would have a great fighting game moveset. He could just have, like, you know, like a backpack filled with, like, Dragon Quest items that he can just, like, fucking throw at you. He can be, like... He can be like Platinum the Trinity from Blaze Blue, but like old and a weird old man. The first ever Mystery Dungeon game was actually a Torneco game. It wasn't Sheeran, are you for real? Is that is that real? <laughs> it wasn't Sheeran? It wasn't Sheeran the Wanderer? That's crazy. But yeah, Tor Torneco is so like important historically, I think, that uh that he squeezed into the roster. There are points where he fell off the base roster and there are points where I didn't even have him on the DLC roster, but he squeezed back into the base roster. Shirin was second. That's crazy. I don't know how to deal with that. Okay, let's um let's get some Capcom characters on here. Um Realize something. I move that. Um, do I want to show my hand in regards to a thing I did for Capcom yet? I don't know. Um, oh, I, I know what I'll do. 
I, d- I just showed off one of Square Enix's big franchises. Let's show off one of Capcom's big franchises, even though there's just one rep in uh in the base roster. Mega Man Volnut from uh from Mega Man Legends. So, yeah, so I'm including all these characters from from RPGs. So I had to include the action RPG spin-off of Mega Man, which is Mega Man Legends. Um Mega Man Volnut, this this actually is not his first time in a versus Capcom game. He was in Tatsunoko versus Capcom. He had a very very strange move set that I tried to make him my main because I love Mega Man Legends so much. And it didn't work out because he was weird. Mega Man Volna was a little weirdo mechanically. Um, so maybe we'd change him up a bit for Square Enix versus Capcom. But uh but yeah, you know, he would uh he would have a variety of weapons that he could equip to his buster. And uh and yeah, it'd just be cool to have him here, man. We'll put him right here. And, uh, and yeah, that's, that's the one Mega Man thing in the base roster. Um, we'll, we'll see if anything else pops up in the DLC. We'll see. Um, let's get another, uh, let's get another RPG character with a single rap, but at least in this case, the RPG character with a single rep makes sense because who else would you really include from this franchise? And that's a uh, Amateras from Okami. Um, yeah. Yeah. This, this was, this was like an RPG, right? There was like an action RPG, uh, you know, more, more like maybe more like an action adventure. Really? I guess it depends on whether or not you qualify Zelda as an RPG. Although I guess Amaterasu, I guess Okami has more of an RPG vibe than Zelda does. Just slightly more, you know? Um, but yeah, Amaterasu has been in versus Capcom games before. Uh, she's got the fucking thing on her back that she can, like, swing around like a whip. Uh, that was really cool to use in uh, MVC3. So, like, yeah, so she's perfect. She's a character from an RPG. She's got a cool, unique weapon that isn't just another sword. Um, and I love her. She's Pubby. I love Pubby. So Pubby joins the roster. Once once I once she came to mind, I'm like, oh yeah, that's a lock for the base roster, baby. Legends is cool though. You liked you liked Mega Man Volnut and Tatsunoko. Me too. I liked him. I just couldn't play him properly. His his playstyle was too strange for me. Um Okay, do we... Should I start adding more Final Fantasy characters, or do we want to see another Square Enix franchise? More FF? Okay. All right, the people have spoken. A person has spoken. Good, because now, now I'm making more room for FF. I, I realize that they won't all fit on the top row. 
So let's get more FF out here. <laughs> and then we can all despair together at, at what I've had to do with, for this roster. Um... All right, next final fantasy rep. Baltier from Final Fantasy XII. Uh, I think this guy's beloved, right? Like, even people that don't like Final Fantasy XII love this guy. Even people that haven't played Final Fantasy XII love this guy. Uh, he's cool. He's just a sexy British man. Um, and uh, he's got a gun. Instead of a, instead of just like another sword, right? You shoot, um, and uh, and yeah, like like weapon variety on the score next side of the roster will get you places. Uh, so like yeah, here he is. Um, putting him right under cloud feels a bit weird. I feel like there's. Well, now nah, we'll put him under cloud. Um, and uh, next up, Lightning from Final Fantasy 13. <laughs> now, I won't I, I I won't say too many cuts all at once, but here's one cut. Squall from Final Fantasy 8 is not in the base roster. He was in many versions of the base roster, uh, but eventually he fell off both the base and the DLC. And Lightning stayed on. Um they both had gun blades. They both have gun blades, so it was hard to justify keeping them both. Um, and Lightning uh, ultimately has, like, more stuff, more moveset potential going on than Squall does, right? Um, she's more mobile, she's more acrobatic. Um, and uh, it also didn't hurt that, like, it's it was really tough to put, like, female characters in the base roster on the Square Enix side. Uh, so, like, it felt... It felt... It would be stupid to not put her in the base roster. And also, like... Like, say... Say what you will about Final Fantasy XIII. What you will say about Final Fantasy XIII is probably correct. Lightning was pretty cool. Lightning was a cool character. She was a cool design. Uh, and it's not her fault she was in the game that she was, you know? So there she is. And Saz, though, I love Saz. I love Saz so much. He was not the objective choice for the Final Fantasy 13 rap in the roster. Especially, especially because Baltier's there, you know? You've already got cool guy with gun. So, uh. So, yeah, I do love Saz, though. Unlike. On like a 70 character roster, I'd probably try to squeeze Saz in. But then I probably couldn't because like Snow would take priority over him, Vanille would probably take priority, Fang. Um Saz 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 is an NPC in the story mode. How about that? Saz Saz shows up to give lightning advice. <laughs> uh Okay, and here's the last Final Fantasy character that, uh, here's the next to last Final Fantasy character, and we'll introduce the last one later.
Kafka. I feel like I don't have to justify Kafka too much. He's He's got a lot of great, unique potential for a fighting game moveset. Uh, he's got an iconic design. Um, you know, he's the most beloved part of of a very respected and revered, like, Final Fantasy game. Um, yeah. And, uh, and he's, he's a cool antagonist that a lot of the, a lot of the rest of the cast of the game can kind of tangle with in the story mode. You know, he's definitely like, he'll definitely be a fun obstacle in the game's story. And just like a pain in the ass for everyone else to deal with. You didn't think Kafka would make it. I... I had to... I For this roster, I ended up making a lot of decisions with my brain and not my heart. <laughs> there isn't a Final Fantasy IX character in the roster. Final Fantasy IX is my favorite Final Fantasy game. And... I I didn't have room. I didn't have room. But making decisions with my brain, Kefka felt like a no-brainer. Um Cool, let's uh all right. Let's let's reveal the big thing I'm doing with Capcom. So uh Steiner DLC are right. God. God, I I, <laughs> I want that so bad. It's not it's just not the decision I made I think the Square Enix or Capcom would make. <laughs> if, if I were like one of the executive producers, Steiner would be in the base roster. But I'm not. I'm not. This is a pre this is like a roster prediction, you know, what I think would happen if this game were to exist. If you know, and obviously, this game existing isn't isn't the most likely thing. Not the most unlikely thing either. I think there's less likely rosters that I've already put together. Um. Right, there you are. There you are. Okay. So, like like I've mentioned in the guidelines, I want to feature like a lot of RPG characters, characters with weapons, etc. Um, I think one cool thing, like when I think of the story mode, I think one cool thing is that the Street Fighter characters aren't really the focal characters in in the Square Enix versus Capcom story. The Capcom characters that get the most focus and the most attention will be from a franchise that Capcom has not given attention to themselves in a really long time. And that is Breath of Fire. So, uh... So, yeah. So, Breath of Fire will have multiple reps. And this is, uh... This is Ryu from Breath of Fire 3. Um, you obviously gotta have at least one... Uh, Breath, Breath of Fire is one of those games where... It's one of those franchises where the cast is different. It's 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 kind of like Zelda, where the cast is different every game, but some characters kind of like reincarnate and repeat, right? There's a character named Ryu and a character named Nina in every Breath of Fire game. So this is the Ryu from Breath of Fire 3. Uh, he can uh, turn into a dragon. I think he can turn into multiple dragons. Um, all Ryus can turn into dragons, but Ryu can turn into dragons in like really cool and interesting ways. The version, the version from three can, uh, and you know, he's got big sword and he's got like great RPG, like protagonist vibes. I think he has one of the cooler designs out of all the breath of fire we use. So he's, he's kind of like the protagonist of the Capcom side of the whole story. He's also a silent protagonist, but he's more of kind of like the, you know, the stoic, uh, the stoic, like, mysterious, dramatic kind of silent protagonist, um, that you see in a lot of modern JRPGs, or I guess not even modern anymore, right? You see it in a lot of, like, PlayStation 1 era JRPGs, as opposed to the, the cutesy, 
uh, emotive silent protagonist that uh, that the Dragon Quest hero is going to be. But yes, there is a Ryu in every Breath of Fire game, and there is also... A Nina in every Marvel vs. Capcom game. Uh, now, this is the Nina for Breath of Fire 1. Um, I kind of... I haven't really played much Breath of Fire myself, so I kind of looked around, and it seems like... Uh, it seems like the favorite Nina is from Breath of Fire 2, mostly. People seem to like that design the best. But I went with Breath of Fire 1 Nina, um, partially because apparently... Uh, Apparently, Breath of Fire 1 Nina was planned to be in Marvel vs. Capcom 3, but she got cut partway through development. She was going to have a super where all the Ninas showed up and, like, would would attack the enemy together, kind of like Mega Man's final smash in Smash Bros., right? Um, so, as kind of a nod to that, but also because I think... Um, I think Nina kind of... Like, this, this Nina is, like, really, like, bubbly and fun and, like you know, really upbeat. I thought uh, her personality would kind of balance out Breath of Fire 3 Ryu uh, more, because Breath of Fire 2 Nina is very, like, shy and quiet and stoic, right? And, like, just two, two, two characters just kind of blushing and not talking to each other doesn't really seem like a fun story mode. <laughs> but yeah, she'd have a fly mechanic, you know? She'd be able to fly around the screen. She'd be really cool with air combos. Uh, she has, like, a little dagger, and she has, like, holy magic, so that seems like that'd be fun. And finally, uh, finally for the Breath of Fire representation in the base roster, is a character that I've already mentioned in a different roster. Folu from Breath of Fire 4. Uh, this guy can also turn into dragons, and he's a fucking badass, and he has just a cool design. Um, yeah, he will be, uh, he'll be one of the antagonists in the story, right? He'll be kind of working with the bad guys and working against, uh, the, like, heroic characters. Um, he might, he might do some kind of heel face turn partway through, but, uh, but he'll at least initially be a jerk, a bad guy. And he'll turn into dragons and use dark magic and just be really badass it's such a cool design it's so dumb that that design got like trapped in the 90s and they never reused it again it's wild that capcom put in star gladiator and characters from a capcom arcade quiz game into a versus Capcom roster, but not Power Stone or Breath of Fire. <laughs> yeah. It, that is wild, isn't it? Well, we're we're remedying that tonight. We're remedying the Breath of Fire part tonight. Okay, cool. So let's see what I've got. I've got eight Square Enix characters on the board. I've got eight Capcom characters on the board. Let's, uh, let's, let's put up a, another big Square Enix franchise, shall we? The, yeah, we, we saw this one coming, right? Like, this, this, the, I obviously had to find room for this. Um, yeah. Uh, obvious. So, yeah, Sora is here. Uh, he will be devoid of any Disney stuff besides the Mickey Mouse symbol on his keychain. Um, right? Like, Goofy won't be here. Donald won't be here. Uh, but Sora will be here and he'll, he'll do cool Keyblade stuff, you know, um, 
he'll uh, magic. I'm sure he'll like he'll have an install where he brings out two keyblades and then his his combo potential becomes crazy. Um, maybe maybe even he busts out a different keyblade form or two is like one of his supers. Um, yeah, obviously he's got a lot of potential, and he's one of the biggest names in video games right now. So, you know, you obviously got to find room for him. Boy, Sora. And... Zeha Nort. Uh, he will be... I, I thought about making him the main boss of, like, you know, of the whole Square Enix side, uh, because I guess I haven't mentioned on this stream yet, but each roster, I kind of have a boss character for each side, and then in the story mode, they basically, like, join forces and, you know, either, like, fuse into something horrible together or, like... Uh, or, you know, ba basically, like... You know, there'll be some final unplayable boss that is uh that is the result of the combined efforts of two boss characters, one from each side. But the boss characters will be playable, because I like it when the boss characters are playable. Uh the the fused combined final boss won't be. But uh but yeah. I thought about making Xehanort the boss character, but instead he would just be kind of like um a you know a villainous character in the story that does work against the heroes and kind of like uh teams up with the main boss character uh probably with the intent of betraying him but that doesn't pan out for whatever reason uh and yeah Ze Zehanort just has like uh the bosses already have Zehanort <laughs> uh yeah, he has he has just like a shitload of whack powers he could use as a fighting game character, you know, just floating around like summoning different weapons. Uh he'd be a fucking mess to fight. Xehanort could have a pretty cool kit if his super boss fight in three is it anything to go by? Yeah, exactly, right? Like he he could be a fucking badass out there. Um Yeah. At at one point, at one point it was Sora and Riku on the base roster together, and now Riku isn't even DLC, and that was a really hard cut. <laughs> that was a really hard cut. Um, let's see over on. Yeah, that's that's all the Kingdom Hearts characters on the base roster. Also, like I have I have five slots left for the whole roster, so. Um, <laughs> there's not many Capcom characters left with more than one rep. Um, so why don't I just fill out the rest of the Darkstalkers representation for this game? With uh, Sin Ko from Darkstalkers. Um, yeah, Sin Ko's pretty cool. Uh, she was in Marvel vs. Capcom 3, and, like, she just has, like, a bunch of uh, weapons just, like, hidden in her in her key pow. I think that's what that thing is called. Um, and, uh, and, you know, she can bring out, like, flails and, like, maces and, uh, and like, buzz saws and stuff. Um swords so in a in a game where i'm looking for characters that like have cool weapons sinko is just loaded with cool weapons and uh and sometimes i feel bad about not being able to include many dark soccer's characters in these so she felt like a really good fit for this game and like kind of a fun cute character to 
involve in in the main story. So, so yeah, she made it onto the base roster next to Morrigan. And uh, let's see. guess maybe I can bust out a couple of like yeah let me, let me bust out a couple of Capcom characters that aren't too shocking or surprising but would be cool in a roster like this first Dante yeah, I mean, he'd be great. He's got guns, he's got sword, he's got demon form. He would be great next to all these RPG characters, right? Uh, I even invite, I even imagine him having, like, a cool sword fight with Cloud at some point, you know? Uh, yeah, that just seems fun. So here, like, it's hard, it's hard to not put Dante in a lot of these rosters, actually. I wonder if there is a versus Capcom roster I have where Dante isn't on the base roster. But yeah, he's, he's here. He's here for sure. And another Capcom inclusion that isn't crazy, but hopefully is welcome. Wesker. So, <laughs> so I, Maybe you're starting to see kind of the vibe I'm creating where, like, you have all these kind of RPG heroes uh, joining together to fight, like, like, basically, I'm imagining kind of this squad of, like, of, like, overambitious, like, cunning villain characters, you know? Like, you just have, like, Fulu and and Xehanort and Wesker, um and Kafka all on the same team and like plotting both against the heroes and against each other. <laughs> like, uh, I think this, uh, I think this would make for like a really fun dynamic in the story. And also, uh, gives me an excuse to put a lot of cool villain characters in the base roster. So yeah. Um, honestly, RE five Wesker is halfway to a final fantasy villain anyway. Exactly. <laughs> So organization thirteen, yeah, but you know, uh, Xehanort doesn't have his buddies around, so he needs he needs Wesker instead. <laughs> Wesker would absolutely be a fragment of Xehanort if he were in Kingdom Hearts. He would absolutely he would absolutely be one of the thirteen Xehanorts if he ever wound up in the Kingdom Hearts world. Maybe that can be either Z Wesker or Xehanort's ending. Z <laughs> Xehanort's arcade ending is that, like, he assembles a bunch of edgy Capcom characters to be, like, his new, like, his new Xehanort's, like, his new 13's. He creates a new organization 13 with, uh, with, like, with, like, base from Mega Man and, I don't know, 12, 11 other edgy characters. Yeah, there's Wesker. Wesker in an organization 13 hoodie is something you didn't know you needed. That would that would honestly be amazing. That would unironically be fucking great. Okay. Speaking, speaking of, like, the Square Enix Capcom, like, edgy villain squad. Uh... 
Magus from Chrono Trigger. I knew I needed a Chrono Trigger character in here. Chrono and Frog were both strong contenders, but they lost out because they both have swords. Um, and I have enough sword options in this game. Um, Magus has, you know, cool fucking magic abilities and also a scythe and also like teleports and shit. He just has a lot more like of a unique fighting game move set inside of him. And and like he could be another kind of villainous character. I think Magus in particular would kind of eventually end up like joining up with the heroes and and turning against the villains for the greater good. Um but yeah, he's he's also a great option for like an antagonistic character that can kind of clash against the heroes initially. Um yeah, Magus is a great pick, mid-range mid-range scythe boy. Exactly, mid-range scythe boy. And he's got a cool aesthetic, you know. He's uh he's got a great design and I feel like people would love to have him in the fighting game, you know. He's I think he's definitely a fan favorite within the roster. But I also almost included Luca instead of him because I feel like Luca would also have a great move set in a game like this. But I went I, I ended up keeping Magus. And also on the Square Enix side. To be <laughs> from Near Automata. I yeah, I think this game's a big deal. I think this character is a big deal, even to people that haven't played her game. And yeah, I feel like she'd she'd have a unique moveset. She's a great, like, you know, female rep on on a on a roster that you know the Square Enix side's a, a little weak in that front, um, yeah, she's she's badass, she's fun, she's cool. Um, I thought about making her a DLC character, but Two B has already been a DLC character in two fighting games besides this, so I felt like I felt like maybe people shouldn't spend money on her a third time. So she's in the base roster. <laughs> She's in the base roster, and I think she's also a good, you know, yeah, I think it's also cool that she's in the base roster. I think she deserves to be, you know? Okay, should I reveal the bosses, or should I get into the weird shit first? Like, does... <laughs> does... Would the bosses be a more momentous reveal than the weird shit? Or would the weird... Sh should I shave the weird shit for last? Because I feel like one of the bosses is obvious. I think we've all guessed one of the bosses. Weird shit first, in your opinion. Okay. I'm suspicious because the person who said that is a dear friend of mine and also a very impatient person, but I'll honor it. I'll honor it. Um... Also, wait, do I have any... Uh, oh, I've got one more villain character that isn't the boss on the Capcom side. Um, You're curious about the weird shit? Yeah, see, you're... You're, <laughs> you're, you're the worst person to ask... What should I save for last? Because, because you want, 
You want to see that shit first. But fine. Okay. Here's an here's another villain character on the Capcom side. Oichi. Uh <laughs> This is uh this is a character from Sengoku Basara. She's actually based on a real person. Um she's uh she's Oda Nobunaga's sister. <laughs> hey, what do you want to see first? I want to see this thing first. How dare you? <laughs> Okay, but I felt like when I said that, I stated the intent, you know, I, which would be better to save. Okay. Um. So yeah, this is Oda. This is Oda Nobunaga's sister, uh, from history, that got turned into a video game character. Uh, she wields a naginata, but mostly she like, um, she's like this depressed woman that's like possessed. By like these hands of darkness that just like you know fuck up ways of enemies, um. So yeah, that's that's pretty cool for a fighting game. Uh, when I did Netflix, right, I tried to avoid. Uh. Including characters that were just uh, that were just biographical, like real people, especially alive ones, um. And Oichi's not alive, but the thing that made me decide Oichi was okay is that she's actually already been in a Capcom crossover game. Oichi is a, uh, is a, Oichi is a playable character in Teppin, uh, that weird Capcom mobile card game thing. And, uh, and yeah, so this wouldn't even be the first crossover game that Oichi's been in. And yeah, I I just think she's got a cool vibe. I think uh I think she'd be cool as kind of like not not even like not even one of the schemers of the villain group, but kind of one of like the soldiers that that come out and like stop the the good guys in their tracks, you know. She's just a really tough obstacle for for the for the heroes to face. Oda Nobunaga is just in a bunch of games anyway, so it's fine. The <laughs> yeah, it's 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 weird, but it's certainly been normalized in Japan. Over on the Capcom side, here's. Here's one that came to mind, and and uh, then I realized that they had to be in the game. Tessa from Red Earth. So Red Earth is a fighting game that Capcom made in the '90s that has RPG level up mechanics. As you go, as you go through arcade mode in Red Earth. Uh, your characters will level up and get new moves and abilities uh, that then they then give you a password that you write down to kind of save your progress. So when you start arcade mode again, you can put in the password for your character and start them at level eight and run them through arcade mode again so they can gain more levels and get new abilities. Uh, So Tessa having the opportunity to fight a bunch of RPG characters, she kind of needed to be in this roster, you know, just given her history. And uh and this wouldn't even be her first versus Capcom appearance. She's been in uh SVC Chaos or she's been in at least one uh SNK versus Capcom game. I don't remember if it was SNK versus uh, it was yeah, SNK versus Capcom because it was one that SNK made. Um yeah, she was a hidden character in one of those games, so now she would actually kind of get, like, you know, like, main character billing. Uh, let's get another weirdo on the Square Enix side.
Nobody saw that. It's kind of a miracle that I went through the entire last week without messing up like that, actually. Here's what I meant to show. Bub and Bob! Bub and Bob from Bubble Bobble. Uh. Yeah. So... Square Enix owns the rights, uh, Square Enix has Taito, the arcade game maker Taito, as a subsidiary. So they own the rights to all of Taito's games, and Taito's games include the Bubble Bobble franchise. I wanted to include a Taito rep, right? Um, I wanted to make sure it wasn't just Square Enix RPGs, I wanted, I, I wanted to show more of their catalog, so... Here's here's Bub and Bob. They would short they would sort of be like, you know, like a tandem fighter. They would, you know, run along the screen together and uh and you know, yeah, they have their bubbles, but they also have like they can like chuck like orbs from puzzle bobble at you. And uh I think they they're also in Rainbow Island, so maybe they can do shit with rainbows. But yeah, they they'd fight in tandem, like kind of like a weird, cute little Little ice climbers, kind of, 2D. Yeah, I can't even fully envision what they do, but I do think they need to be in the base rosters, so. You just got here and you see Bub and Bob, great choice. Yeah, I really, I, I must have, I must have psychically, you know, done that to welcome you to the stream. Well, the representation, yeah, they gotta be here, man. They gotta be here, Bub and Bob. All right. So our last weirdos. For sure, the bosses. On the Capcom side. <laughs> on the Capcom side is Amingo from Marvel vs. Capcom 2. Um... So yeah, this was a this was an original character made for Marvel vs. Capcom 2, and we haven't seen him since. He has a weird move set. Um, and here's a here's a couple things, right? A, I feel like I feel like this kind of fits the weirder vibes that Square Enix gives off sometimes. This just feels like this character would be in a Square Enix game. Uh and B, I I just imagine the scene in the story mode, right? Where like uh where like there, there's like an explosion like in the desert, right? And, and like as the smoke settles, you see that it's like upset, like a horde of cactar, right? And the cactar are just like running towards the screen. They're just running through the desert, like. And then you just see like a cactus with a sombrero, just like chilling in the middle of the desert, just like sitting there, just relaxing. And then suddenly, like. A, the horde of cactars just like runs like through the area where he's sitting and like he like gets up and he's like whoa, whoa what's, what's going on and he just like kind of gets swept up in this wave of cactar uh which leads him to eventually join the party because that's how he like bumps into them uh once once that entered my head i uh I put him in the base roster instead of several other characters <laughs> Every versus Capcom game needs a couple of weirdos that don't make sense. But also do make sense in like a weird, strange way, right? So So the yeah, this this roster would be the return of Amingo, the long awaited return of Amingo. Before I reveal the bosses. I think next roster I do, I'll do weirdos last. But before I reel, uh, but before I reel the bosses, the last weirdo on the Square Enix side. It's it's great that Vinny's here. Actually, it's great that Vinny's here.
So someone mentioned earlier that it sucks that Square Enix doesn't have the rights to Gex anymore. Uh, they do though. They actually still have the rights to Gex. So they sold, they sold Crystal Dynamics, right? They sold Crystal Dynamics to Embracer Group, uh, and with Crystal Dynamics, they sold the rights to Tomb Raider. They sold the rights to Deus Ex, right? Um, they they sold that stuff and they lost the rights to those games. Uh, Gex used to belong to Crystal Dynamics, so you would assume that they also lost the rights to Gex. However, uh, last year, last year, Limited Run Games announced a port, a, a a remaster of the Gex trilogy. They they announced a remaster of the first three games, and the trailer for the remaster. The companies at the bottom of the screen at the end, Embracer Group, Crystal Dynamics were not on that banner. Square Enix was. Square Enix, for some reason, kept the rights to Gex when they sold Crystal Dynamics, and they still have the rights to Gex. Uh, like, I'm I'm sure there was actually like I'm sure they were selling Crystal Dynamics. Uh, <laughs> they were selling Crystal Dynamics to to Embracer Group, and I'm sure they were like, and for an extra. Five thousand dollars will give you Gex, and the Bracer Group was like, "No thanks." <laughs> I don't, I don't know if that happened for sure. It's just funny to imagine that happening. But yeah, Gex is here, and he's basically the Deadpool of the story mode. You know, like, uh, you know, like Kafka will will, like, summon a meteor that makes a crater in the Earth, and Gex will just be like, oh, I haven't seen a hole that big since my last Tinder date. You know, like, just, yeah, that, Gex is just there for that shit. No one will like it. <laughs> but it's, it's there. It's gonna be there. Because some, someone at Capcom insisted it should happen. And, uh, and, you know, he'll actually, he could actually have, like, a cool, like, uh, a cool moveset, you know, like, kind of, like, mid-range, like, tail swipes. He could be kind of a weird grappler where, like, he crawls all over you and stuff. And I feel like he could, like, plop TVs onto the ground and, like, maybe do what Teddy does in Persona 4 Arena and, like, use the TVs to, like, teleport. Because I think Gex has a thing where he can, like, crawl into TVs, right? Uh, anyway, yeah. Yep, Ge Gex is the uh, is the is like the last weirdo on the Square Enix side. So yeah, I I think <laughs> I think I might start just showing the bosses earlier because now I feel like there's no suspense. Surprise! <laughs> Fucking surprise! I mean, yeah, you know, yeah, I, I, Sephiroth would be the boss character of of the Square Enix side, right? Like it, it just makes sense. You can't, you can't have this game without Sephiroth. You can't have Sephiroth without making him like one of the biggest threats in the game. Um. However, maybe I feel like one could guess the Capcom boss right now, but maybe it's at least less obvious than Sephiroth.
And that's Gil from Street Fighter. Uh, I think that Gil and Sephiroth would actually complement each other as bosses in a really cool way. Because Gil and Sephiroth actually kind of have similar goals, and that is to become the gods of their respective worlds. So my idea is kind of that, like, uh, they both kind of try to ascend to godhood at the same time and end up, like, inadvertently fusing with each other into kind of this, you know, in a kind of this horrifying, like, biblical entity. Uh, and yeah, Gil just also kind of looks like a Final Fantasy character, you know? He never really fit in Street Fighter, but he does kind of fit in a roster filled with Square Enix characters. So yeah, that's that's Gil. That's Gil as the uh, Capcom boss character in the last character in the base roster. And there you go. That's the base roster for Square Enix versus Capcom. Uh, you've got Ryu, Chun Li, Gil, Morgan, Sinko from Dark Stalkers, Cloud, Tifa, Sephiroth, Sora, Zehanort, uh, Ryu from Breath of Fire Three, Nina from Breath of Fire One, Fo Lu from Breath of Fire Four, Mega Man, Mega Man Volnut from Mega Man Legends, um. And uh, Amada Ross from Okami. And you got Baltier from Final Fantasy XII. Lightning from Final Fantasy XIII. Kefka from Final Fantasy VI. Magus from Chrono Trigger. 2B from Near Automata. Dante from Devil May Cry. Wesker from Resident Evil. Uh, Oichi from Sengoku Basara slash Real Life. Tessa from Red Earth, Amingo from Marvel vs. Capcom 2, the Dragon Quest hero from Dragon Quest 1, Jade from Dragon Quest 11, Torneka from Dragon Quest 4, Bub and Bob from Bubble Bobble, and Gex. The titular Gex. So yeah, hopefully, like, hopefully A... It doesn't seem like any member of the Square Enix roster shouldn't really be there. And B, I hope this illustrates how hard it was to make a base roster out of all the Square Enix options I had, right? Like, like we'll get into the DLC in a bit, and I try to remedy some of the mistakes I've made with the DLC. But, like, spoilers, I won't be able to remedy all of them. I don't even have enough space in the DLC to do that. Uh, but B, yeah, this was hard. This This broke me, man. Uh, I went, I went through it trying to whittle this down, but hopefully this has some level of satisfaction to it. You better be like Fozzie Bear the way that DLC waka waka waka. Uh, I guess I'll just say this up front. Uh, Auron was almost in the DLC, but he didn't make the cut. And that is... That is the only Final Fantasy X character that got that close. But but I also did consider uh, Titus, obviously. I considered Yuna, both in her Final Fantasy X form and her Final Fantasy X 2 form. And I considered Lulu. None of them made it. Uh, I'm sorry, this was very difficult. Final Fantasy X should be represented over Final Fantasy XI, IMO. I'm, I'm guessing you mean twelve. Yes. Yeah. It should be represented over Final Fantasy XII. I, I do somewhat agree with that. Um, I do agree with that. But, uh... But yeah, Baltier still made it in the main roster. Um... Uh, partially because I think Baltier just would provide a really unique play style. Not that there's Final Fantasy char Final Fantasy X characters that wouldn't. I think Yuna in particular would have, you know, would be both a ten rep and a character with a unique play style. Um, the Baltier went out. Maybe.
maybe that was a bad call, but it's hard it's hard to make a hundred percent good calls with a roster of this size. All right, let's start the DLC. Let's start the DLC. So the first DLC character on the Square Enix side was a character that was initially in the base roster before I ran out of room. Actually, a lot of the a lot of the Square Enix DLC was on the base roster before I ran out of room, but uh, Clive from Final Fantasy sixteen is is Queen of one of the summons, and they just eat your opponent. Yeah, sh sure, <laughs> sure. But yeah, I haven't played Final Fantasy sixteen yet, so I couldn't really tell you what his move set would be. Um, I think he has transformations. And obviously his arm's doing a cool thing in that uh in that picture there. But uh but yeah, Final Fantasy 16 just came out. He's obviously going to be in this game in some form at some point, you know, like like Square Enix will want to market the character and the game. So even though I want uh even though I want to put other Final Fantasy characters in the slot, Clive, unfortunately, makes the most sense. Just got back, hell yeah, Gex hype. Yeah, um, you, I guess you missed me saying that uh, Square Enix does own the rights to Gex. They actually do own the rights to Gex. They kept the rights to Gex even when they sold Crystal Dynamics for some reason. You just realized that Sid should be a character and he's a different costume for each Final Fantasy game he's in? Shit, man. That's an incredible idea. <laughs> That's an incredible idea. I guess the only, like, wrench in in that idea is that every, every Sid plays extremely differently than each other, but I, I do fucking love that. Okay, and then the uh, the first DLC on the Capcom side. Yeah, you'd have to have a true Sid move set. Yeah. Um, and you know, I guess it would probably be seven Sid, right? That's probably the most iconic. Right, the next piece of Capcom DLC is Cat from Breath of Fire 2. Um, so for anyone counting, that means that that we have a Breath of Fire 1 rep, a Breath of Fire 2 rep, a Breath of Fire 3 rep, and a Breath of Fire 4 rep. Uh, yeah, that's that's one of the reasons I did that. But also, Cat's got like a cool like staff with like two with like a claw on each end of it. Um, it looks like she'd have like a cool like staff user play style, you know. And also, she's a cat girl, so she could, like, climb up walls and shit. She could have some of Felicia's moveset, because Felicia will probably never be in a versus Capcom game again until she gets a redesign. <laughs> People really love the latest Sid, but you don't know much about him. Oh, that's interesting. Hmm. Um, but yeah, there's... There's Cat. Like, yeah, I haven't played many Breath of Fire games, but she seems cool. She seems cool, and uh, she does seem to be very liked by the Breath of Fire community, so... She reminds you of Samurai Showdown character? Hey, you know what? Yeah, I agree with that. I agree with that. The next Square Enix DLC character... More like Square Enix versus Thundercats. <laughs> you know, that she does have a Thundercat vibe. And I guess Chitara actually did exist before her. So I wonder if that I wonder if the Japanese person that designed her liked to watch Western cartoons or something. 
The next Square Enix rep, Jessica from uh, Dragon Quest VIII. Uh, this is another fan favorite Dragon Quest character. Uh, she's got a whip, so that could make for a cool moveset. She also does magic. Um, so I think the mix of those things would make her a cool fighting game character. And also, it, it just it kills me that I could only fit three Dragon Quest characters onto the base roster. So I try to fix that in the DLC where I can. The next Capcom DLC character I accidentally showed on screen for like half a second. So congratulations if you saw that when I did that. Uh, but now I'm officially unveiling him. Base.exe from Mega Man Battle Network. Uh, yeah, look at this. Look at this fucking character design. Look at how badass this shit is. This guy needs to be a fighting game character. And also, he's a rep from a Mega Man RPG. Uh... And like like I've already said uh, earlier, I, I try to put as many Capcom RPG reps in here as possible. I think that's I thought that was a fun idea. So so base.exe is a is another nod to uh to the to the Mega Man RPG games that exist. And yeah, he he just he just seems fun, you know. I think because I also think that base should be in one of these games at some point. And I, this is my favorite base design. This is literally the coolest base has ever been, right? You mean Dragon Quest characters are all the same? Not like in Final Fantasy where you have 16 sins. <laughs> Great point, man. Well, well, eloquently and, and expertly put. It's a great base design? Yeah, man. Alright, closing out DLC 1. On the Square Enix side. With Axel from Kingdom Hearts. Um, so, at one point, Riku was in the base roster, and then Riku was DLC. And then I was like, he could absolutely play differently than Sora, like even significantly differently, but they're both kind of like two dudes with keyblades, and it'd be cool to have some weapon variety shown in the Kingdom Hearts franchise, especially because Kingdom Hearts legit does have a variety of weapons represented. And it also did not hurt that Axel is a is a huge fan favorite. Axel is super duper loved by the Kingdom Hearts community. And I feel like there is a chunk of that community that want that would want to see Axel in a fighting game more than they'd want to see Riku in a fighting game. There's also definitely people that would prefer Riku, but I think I think Axel has is like a breakout character in the franchise, you know? Um and yeah, he'd have cool fucking fire moves and uh and use his, his spiky chakram things uh he'd say have it memorized a bunch yeah i th i think he's he was kind of the clear option for the last kingdom hearts character in the roster uh which also feels silly but i <laughs> my room is limited demix also roxas would be great roxas would be great um i I'm I'm accounting for Roxas by having Sora's moveset include double keyblade stuff. Uh D Demix definitely has a fan base and Demix would be cool with his water guitar, but I do think that I do think that Axel would be more of a crowd pleaser than Demix in terms of like DLC releases. More people would shell out extra money for Axel than they would for Demix. So that's the one that Capcom and Square Enix would pick. And uh and for the last Capcom DLC character of season one, I'm pulling out a tactic I've already pulled out, I think at least once, and I might do it again. Um 
and that is making Virgil DLC. <laughs> he uh he's just a great pick for DLC, you know. He's a cool fighting game character. He has an established versus Capcom like move set that people love. Um and people would spend extra money on him because they want to play as him that bad. So Virgil's DLC again. <laughs> Okay. We are down to the last season of DLC for Square Enix versus Capcom. So first up, Yuffie Kisaragi, Final Fantasy VII Remake, Intergrade. Uh, yeah. Virgil is like Biken and Rock Howard. They know you'll pay extra every time. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Uh, yeah, y Yuffie seems like just an obvious pick. She'd probably be in the base roster if I had more room, you know? Um, yeah, just like a, a zippy ninja character, you know, fucking rush down, fucking throw in that spiky weird boomerang thing. And, um, yeah, her moveset would be great. She is a, a clear fan favorite. People, people would riot if she wasn't in a final version of the game, you know? Uh, so yeah, Yuf Yuffie... Yuffie is the last uh, FF7 rep. She's also the last Final Fantasy rep in the whole roster. Uh, there's there's obviously so many other Final Fantasy characters that should be here. Uh, but y Yuffie is obviously like a, a top contender. Like, she kind of had to be here. But yeah, the, this, this was tough, figuring out the Final Fantasy side of the roster, you know? Like, I wanted... I wanted to put Barrett in here. I wanted to put several Final Fantasy X characters in here. Final Fantasy IX is my favorite FF game. And uh and there is not a Final Fantasy IX character in the roster. One sec. Okay, thanks. Thanks for waiting. Um, okay, where was I? Right. 
Yuffie's on the roster. Up next on the Capcom side. Is the Arisen from Dragon's Dogma. <laughs> I actually tried to find room for this guy on the base roster, but I I liked all of my other picks too much, you know? So uh so yeah, he, he got moved to DLC. They got moved to DLC, but as as a Capcom RPG character, I really wanted to put them in, so here they are. And at least, uh, at least, you know, at least the Arisen has weapon options besides swords, so they'll kind of, I guess they'll kind of be like Byleth in that they use, like, multiple different weapons, you know, and kind of cycle between them. Um... Next on the Square Enix side is Sorrow from Dragon Quest. Uh, now, specifically, so Sorrow is technically a Dragon Quest IV character. Um, and making Dragon Quest IV the only character to have more than one rep. But this version of Sorrow is from Dragon Quest Monsters 3, and I'd be including him as a Dragon Quest Monsters rep. Um... Because I, I feel like Dragon Quest Monsters as a sub-franchise really deserves a representation. You know, Dragon Quest Monsters is a big deal. And I think it'd be cool to have Sorrow basically be like the summon character. That like, uh, I guess in addition to the summon mechanic that this game would have, his, his moves, all of his special moves, would be calling monsters onto the battle system to do attacks for him. Right? And, uh... Um, and yeah, so you get to see, you'd get through, sorry, you'd get to see a variety of different Dragon Quest monster designs, which I think would be very fun. So, so yeah, he's, he squeaked onto the roster as the last Dragon Quest representative, which makes me very sad because there's so many Dragon Quest characters. It'd be so cool in a fighting game. So cool. So good. But alas... Now let's get weird. This way, Arisen. Pawn leads them to a fighting game. <laughs> that's the trailer. Yeah, that's the trailer. Um, now let's get weird. I feel like there's one person in chat who might even recognize this character, and I don't think that's a guarantee. This is Spider. <laughs> uh... A recruitable character in in the Mega Man X spin-off game, uh, Mega Man X Command Mission, which was a JRPG spin-off of Mega Man X. You do recognize Spider- Oh, good. Sean was the person I thought might recognize him, and I was right. Uh, yes. Uh, Spider is, like, a cool, like, mysterious, sexy robot man that, like, fights with playing cards. Um, and yeah, he's got a cool design. I think he'd have a very unique moveset. Um, and, you know, he's, he's got kind of, like, he's one of those characters that, like, uh, that, like, is very friendly and charismatic, but also kind of has a secret agenda that you don't know about. Um, and yeah, I think he'd be... I think it'd be really cool to have him in the in the game, even though I've never played Command Mission myself. But I was kind of looking at Command Mission characters because it was an RPG. And Spider really stood out. That's a deep cut, yeah. Oh, someone else in the chat knows who Spider is. <laughs> and they said a command mission spoiler that I are that I only know because I read Spider's wiki entry. 
no Toilin Trouble from uh from Dragon Quest Monsters of the Dark Prince. Unfortunately, Toilin Trouble did not make it in. Sorry, Toilin Trouble. You literally play five card draws him and your moves are more powerful the better his hand is. Your favorite kind of crunchy. Oh my god, that could absolutely be like a sub mechanic that he has in the fighting game. He'd be the Junpei of this game. He'd have like a stupid complicated card mechanic that you need to use properly to like max to like make his character like broken. <laughs> like he's super powerful if you have the correct cards. But you have to like fuck around like while you're fighting your opponent in order to get those cards set up. But yep, yeah, that's Spider might be one of the deepest cuts in this whole exercise, honestly. I, I was kind of proud that I found him. Cause he does feel fitting for, for Square Enix versus Capcom. Alright, and now we're down to the last DLC characters of Square Enix versus Capcom. Final representatives. The last DLC character on the Square Enix side. It's Chloe Price from Life is Strange. Um So uh so yeah, you know, I wanted Besides Gex, I wanted at least more, at least one more Western representative from from Square Enix's catalog, and I think Life is Strange is still like a big deal. You know, it's still, it's still kind of like a strangely revolutionary game in in like gaming history. You know, I think it really, it really kind of put a new focus on on narrative games and choice based games and you can kind of see the ripples that life of strange is like left in the industry um and uh i i picked chloe because i think chloe a uh i think i think chloe's one of the most beloved characters in the franchise uh b she has her own game right she is a protagonist in in a life is strange like side game but she's still you know, she's still a main character. Um, and see, I think, I think she'd have a cool move set, you know, like she could, uh, she could like pull out a guitar and like, uh, like, you know, a, like play the guitar, but also like smack you with a guitar. Um, for one of her supers, Max would come out and rewind time. Right. Uh, like Max as a whole character by herself, doesn't make a lot of sense but as a super for chloe i think uh i think then it makes like everything becomes better with with that you know like i think i think chloe is like kind of the front runner like doing the damage doing attacks kind of like uh uh, kind of like moshing, kind of like doing like mosh pit like fighting techniques, um, while Max can come out for like certain special moves and use her time control for, for like special occasions, basically. Um. Yeah, yeah. Clo Chloe's the last DLC. Before I revealed, someone said, excited for the final Square character to be from the seminal classic, The Bouncer. I did think about The Bouncer, but God, look at all the room I did not have. <laughs> yeah, this this was another really hard one, particularly the Square Enix side of the roster. The last Capcom character... is a character where I'm like, what what would, like, build a lot of hype? What would people... What would Capcom fans be really excited to see as the last character? And it's Strider Hear You! Um, I think he'd be great for Square Enix versus Capcom because he's got a shitload of weapons, right? Uh, and so he'd be... He'd be great against all these other weapon-based fighters. Um, and yeah, he's obviously, like... People want him in every versus Capcom game. He's a fan favorite. Uh, so yeah, so he he would be kind of the 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 DLC character to close out everything. 
uh the the finale that everyone would scream that he's finally here and yeah there you go man square enix versus capcom the dlc is uh Clive from FF16, Cat from Breath of Fire 2, Jessica from Dragon Quest 8, Base.exe from Mega Man Battle Network, uh, Axel from Kingdom Hearts, and Virgil from Devil May Cry in the first season, and Yuffie from FF7, The Arisen from Dragon's Dogma, Sorrow from Dragon Quest Monsters the Dark Prince, Spider from Mega Man X Command Mission, Chloe Price from Life is Strange, and Strider Hear You from Strider as Season 2. Yeah, here, here's everybody. <laughs> God, this killed me. This killed me to put together. Hopefully it's a cool roster. Strider makes sense in every versus game. You get it. He rules. Yeah, he does rule. It's true. Great roster. Mostly you're just glad to see Bub and Bob show up. You miss a lot of their discussion, but they're great Taito rep. Yeah, I, I included them because they're a Taito rep, basically. Uh, Like, I wanted a Taito rep because Square Enix owns Taito. And Bub, Bub and Bob felt like the best choice. Surprise, there's no The World Ends With You rep. I did think about World Ends With You. I just, yeah, I, I couldn't couldn't find the room just based on all my other criteria. You know, like, I knew I needed, a, I needed what f would feel like a respectable amount of Final Fantasy characters and Dragon Quest characters. And I needed at least a few Kingdom Hearts characters in there. And once I've done all that, like... There, there wasn't enough room for the two dozen other franchises that that Square Enix has. Um, yeah, I wrote down like a lot of uh, <laughs> I wrote down a lot of cuts, right? I wrote down a lot of cuts. I'm not going to say all of them because there's always a chance that, um. Like, it, it'd be fun to talk follow-up DLC at some point, but I will say that one character that almost made it in, but I didn't have room at all, was a Trials of Mana character. I wanted a mana representative, and I didn't have room for a mana representative, so so that's so that franchise isn't in this roster at all, and that, that feels like a big omission to me. You're not too versed in Final Fantasy, but did I consider the Black Mage from FF1 their kind of series rep? Um, it's funny. I didn't have that thought. Uh, I did, I did think of a specific black mage, uh, to enter the roster and I didn't have room. Um, but what I, uh, an idea similar to that is that I have the, I have the hero from Dragon Quest one, uh, like the little chibi here from Dragon Quest one. I have him. As the as one of the playable reps for Dragon Quest, so I kind of had that idea, but I had it for Dragon Quest instead of Final Fantasy. Gex, but no Twelve is hilarious. I, <laughs> yeah, I I needed like every every versus Capcom game has like at least a couple of like weirdo character options, right? And I knew that Gex would be the weirdo for Square Enix. Um... Yeah, like, you know, N Neku, Neku from The World Ends With You wasn't weird enough. He's weird, but he's not that kind of weird. Uh, Mana would have been cool, but you get me. Yeah, it's it was an unfortunate cut. We're back to last week with Wigman, LOL. <laughs> Look, games, <laughs> these games have criteria that Capcom fulfills pretty much every time, right? And in Shonen Jump's case, Shonen Jump's crossover games also have criteria that they fill almost every time. I gotta make sure that I'm hitting those criteria, right? So there will be roster picks that look stupid, but those stupid roster picks would be in a version, in like, in a game that Capcom put out, right? Like... Like, Capcom would make the game, that character would be in it, and people would go, that character is stupid, another character should have been there instead. But, like, 
I'm I'm predicting that. That's what I'm predicting. And I'm predicting that they should be in the roster. I'm predicting that they would be if this game existed. But also I would main gags. <laughs> also I would main gags. Okay, cool. We we finished another roster. Um So let's uh let's roll the next one, shall we?